If you are a command line developer and you want to do IoT Edge development, we've got you covered. I have John Gallant here with me today. He's going to demo the new IoT Edge dev CLI tool that works with Azure CLI, Azure CLI IoT extension. And you're going to see how cool the thing is in a moment on the IoT show. Thanks for watching the Internet of Things show. I'm Olivier, your host. Uh, today, we'll be talking about dev tools and CLI tooling for IoT Edge development. And for that, I have John Gallant with me. John, thanks, Good to for, see you. thanks for coming on the show. Thank like, you. Again, yes. right? So that's the second time, actually, you came to talk about this topic. Things have changed because uh, IoT Edge is now GA. Uh, we've been growing up. The tooling is, is super solid now. Uh, we have tons of new features. And you came here for some demos of what experience looks like, right? That's right. We have completely revamped the Azure CLI uh, IoT Edge Dev Tool, which yep. we talked about last time. We have now integrated it into the uh, Visual Studio Code experience. Yep. Um, and so now all of the commands in the CLI uh, are the same as they are in the extension. OK. And so all the build, push, deploy, all those commands are exactly the same. So whether you're a developer that prefers working in an IDE or a developer prefers working with an in CLI, you basically have the exact same set of functionality when you, you work with an ITH device. That's right. Yep. Okay. It simplifies things for people who want text-only commands yep. through a command prompt mm -hmm. uh, versus clicking with the UI. So Got both it. are valid. Uh, but in, in the uh, CLI approach, you can hit the up arrow and the enter key. To do yes. something that you can do in the VS Code extension, yeah. which would be a, you know, a couple of clicks. And you can script as well, right? So you can basically right. create your own dev script based on the CLI tool, That's right. Right, which is not as easy with the, the VS Code extension, where you work more on, the, you know, on one piece of the solution mm -hmm. with the CLI. You can also automate things using the, the scripting of yeah. the CLI commands. Right? Actually, uh, you know, one of the scenarios is to integrate with the CI CD system, right? So if you okay. want to yeah. automate your build and deploy and push mm -hmm. container registry and all that, you can do it from either a bash script or right inside of VSTS or Jenkins or whatever. Okay. Yeah. So what is it you're going to show us today? So I'm going to show you the new Quick Start, mm -hmm. a brand new container that has all the dependencies you need to run the dev tool. Okay. So it has the .NET CLI, it has the Azure CLI, okay. it has the Azure CLI extension, it even has Python and okay. Docker, everything. It's like two gig. <laughs> so what you're saying is basically you don't need to install the prereqs. You basically just get a container image, run it locally, and you get everything for you, right? That's right. Okay. Yeah. Pretty, pretty, yeah. actually, pretty useful, I guess. Yeah. So right. once you have that container cache locally, it's, mm -hmm. it's an instant start. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's let's go. Let's dive right in. Let's do it. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is go to aka.ms slash IoT Edge Dev. Okay. That's going to bring you to the GitHub repo. That's now Azure IoT Edge Dev. Okay. And the first thing we're going to do is go through a quick start. Mm -hmm. The quick start is uh, the container approach. Okay. Uh, and the only thing required is uh, Docker C on your on your machine. Okay. So if you don't have Docker C, you can mm -hmm. go ahead and install that right now. Uh, the other thing that you're going to want to do is actually share a, a local drive into your Docker container. Okay. And so in, to enable that, you actually have to go into Docker settings. So I'm going to show you that real quickly. Mm -hmm. Docker settings, uh, shared drive C. So what that allows you okay. to do is from within the container, you're going to create an edge solution. Mm -hmm. You want to access those files on your host machine. So mm -hmm. you can then open up in VS Code if you want to, no, or no, whatever. Makes you want. Sense. Does it matter if you're running Windows, Mac OS, Linux? Uh, right now, way? we um, you can use any host. Okay. Uh, but the container support is only Linux for now. That's okay. coming coming soon. Okay. Exactly. Within the next couple of weeks. But so. whichever machine you're developing on, you can use that. Each. That's right. right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And even in the quick start here, we have Windows, Linux, and Mac OS start commands for that. Okay. Container. Awesome. Yep. So once you have Docker C installed and you have a uh, drive set up, yep. then we're going to we're going to start the container. Uh, first thing we're going to do is create a directory uh, under your temp folder. You can create this anywhere, obviously. Okay. Uh, we're going to call it C temp IoT Edge. Okay. This is going to house our local files. Mm -hmm. Now the Docker run command is going to volume mount the Docker sock so that the container has access to your host machine's Docker uh, instance. Okay. Right. So the actual, you know, you, when you create a container, it's actually going to contain yep, on your host. Yep, yep. When you run a registry and all that stuff, it's going to be right on your host. Okay, makes sense. And then we're going to volume mount the uh, C temp folder that we just created, mm -hmm. and mount that to a home IoT Edge folder within your container. Okay. Right. Anything that's on your home IoT Edge yeah, yeah. folder on your container will be mirrored 
on your local machine. Yeah, so basically it doesn't matter. You're, you'll be, you have two environments, right? Which is the Docker container and your host machine. Yep. But the idea is that it would not make any difference because you will be working on, on the same resources, same files, and so That's forth. That's right. right? Um, so the actual, uh, i got to scroll here a little bit, but the actual name is Microsoft slash IoT Edge Dev. That's the okay. uh, container image name. Okay, makes sense. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click here. We're going to paste that into our command prompt. Okay. I already have it downloaded. It goes. Okay. It drops you right into a terminal, a home IoT Edge. Okay. Right. So, so you were saying that the image is a bit big, right? So the very first time it's going to download it, uh, that that image locally, right? right? And but once yeah. it's done once, like it's instant. You basically like just load the container and, and that's right. And, okay. The majority of that bulk is from the .NET SDK, which oh. is something like 1.8 gig. Okay. That container. Okay. Um, so, uh, we, but we actually need that to add C sharp modules and things like that into oh, okay. our uh, edge solution. Okay. Makes yeah. sense. Okay. So then the next command that we're going to run is IoT Edge Dev init. What that's going to do is shell out an Azure IoT Edge solution for you. Okay. It has all the configuration files you need, mm -hmm. and it has a sample module. Okay. Okay. And the next thing that init does is it goes into Azure and pulls your IoT Hub connection string mm -hmm. and your device connection string for you so you don't have to go to the portal, come back and get it. Okay. And you can imagine in an automation scenario mm -hmm. where you have this set up in a CI CD system and you want your CI CD system to create an IoT Hub, create a device, yep. things like that, yep. you can use a CLI to do Makes so. Sense. Makes sense. So IoT Edge Dev init. And that's going to ask me to log into the Azure CLI. Okay. It's creating a module. Mm -hmm. and there so we go. Yeah, now the I'm going to go to Microsoft.com slash device login mm -hmm. into this code, and it will pull all of my IoT Hub. So, so the usual way of logging into Azure CLI when uh, you're using a tool. That's right. Yep. Okay. So IoT Edge Dev Init has pulled all the subscriptions associated with my account. Okay. So I'm going to select one here. I know it's this F91. Select that. It's setting that as my active subscription. It is saying what resource group location do you want to use? I'm going to choose the defaults here. I'm going to say okay. West US. I'm going to choose the default resource group that it gives me. Okay. I'm then going to select my SKU. I'm going to use just the free IoT Hub SKU. Just for testing purposes. Mm -hmm. Default name. Yep, it's going to use a default name. A random name has been picked. That's right. Yep. It's going to create an IoT Edge device for me. And now it's retrieving my connection strings okay. IoT Hub connection string and device connection string. And you can see down here, it said it's successfully backed up my .env file okay. to this backup file. And it has copied my connection strings to, that, to the original file. Okay. Now, the .env file is basically a, a key value pair of environment variables that mm -hmm. get, gets loaded when IoT Edge Dev is run. Okay. Yeah. So let's go into Windows Explorer here. All right, so this is my local I temp IoT Edge folder mm -hmm. that has a solution I just created. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the command line here. So the next command we're going to run is a sudo IoT Edge Dev build. Okay. We need sudo because it has special permissions with Docker yep. and so on. Uh -huh. um, and so we're going to run that command. It's going to go through each of the modules that are in my solution, build them, create Docker images. Yep. yep. You yep. were saying that when you create a solution, there's a default, is a temp sensor type of module, right? Like we have in VS Code when we do that in the IDE. It's actually the exact same module that's created in Visual Studio. Code. Awesome. Yep. All the same templates, same code, everything. Okay. Yep, so I'm going to go sudo IoT Edge Dev build. Cool. Now, when you're running this locally, you don't have to use sudo. Yeah. When in the container you do, or in Linux. Makes sense. Yeah. So what that has done is built that built my filter module, mm -hmm. and it, it built my Docker files. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what it did is it expanded my deployment template JSON to config deployment JSON. So we have a template deployment file. That is, um, it has environment variable replacements in it. Yep. We automatically generate one that you can use to deploy. Okay, yep. makes sense. Yep. So the other very cool thing that's that's brand new is what we call IoT Edge Hub Dev, which is a local simulator of the actual Edge agent. Oh. It's a Python library that basically simulates the actual Edge agent on your local machine. Okay. So you don't have to install. You don't have to worry about certs or anything like that. 
The cool thing with that is you don't need to push your modules to a container registry. Mm. All you need to do is build those um, containers locally. Yep, yep. And then when you run the simulator, it picks up that code on your local machine. So you save that round trip. Got it. Yeah. So, so it's a purely local environment for debugging that's your right. ITH device. That's awesome. right. Cool. And Visual Studio Code uses the exact same simulator. OK. So now I'm going to run this. So this is going to uh, sudo IoT Edge dev start setup. It's actually going to start the simulator mm -hmm. and set it up for you. Okay. So that's using the device ID that's been created previously. That's right. And so the device will act yeah. as that device uh, to the IT Hub. Yep. It okay. recognizes that .env file environment variable and just okay. uses that. Yep. Okay. Okay. The simulator is all set up. Okay. So now what's actually happening is that module is running because I started the simulator. It finds that module and runs it. Got it. Uh, now, because that sample module is just a pass-through sending messages to IoT yeah, Hub, yeah. if we do a monitor right now, we'll actually see messages. OK. So let's just do an IoT Edge dev monitor. That's monitoring, that's monitoring the, the messages that are actually in between the modules, or they're actually sent to IoT Hub? This up, is upstream. just modules sent upstream to IoT Hub. Okay. As you can see, messages are flowing through. OK. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so this under the covers uses the new Azure CLI extension, mm -hmm. uh, which you can get at AKAMS slash IoT CLI. Okay. Um, so AZ IoT, all the commands. Create an IoT hub, okay. uh, create devices, deploy devices, all that. So if you need one off commands, you okay. use a CLI. So basically, you Azure CLI, Azure C IoT CLI extension. IoT Edge dev tool. That's right. Everything Python based, everything works together, everything is based on the other one, basically. That's right. Yeah, yep, they're building blocks. Exactly. Okay. Well, John, that's an awesome demo what you can do with CLI tool for Thank developing you. for IoT Edge. Uh, if you're interested in doing that with the VS Code extension that we've been mentioning several times, we did an episode recently with Joe Binder doing exactly that. So you have Joe presenting the VS Code version of that, and we have uh, John actually talking about the uh, CLI tooling. So both of them are. Uh, complementary, you choose the one you want because basically, as you were saying, John, like it's exactly the same functionality. They're actually based on the same tooling, mm -hmm. uh, so that's the same result at the end of the day, right? That's right. Awesome. And uh, well, if you want to learn more, like follow the links that are below here, and uh, don't forget to subscribe for the show. Thanks for watching. Thank you.